Well, the whole park was really run down, and there was a lot of uh, guys that used to do drugs around here, and a lot of other bad things I don't want to say. You'd see them at a picnic table towards the back of the park, and you know who knows, you know what was really going on there. It was just trashy. It was disgusting. I remember this park being all ugly and ghetto. I don't mean to diss or anything, but they were kind of shabby. Council and, and city manager Glenn Southerd and, and uh, our staff determined that uh, we need to do something about that. Today, Indio's parks look like this. The transformation took less than two years. A miracle? No, something more. Frankly, we had a great team on it. Uh, uh, parks have always been a priority for me, but I've got great staff people, uh, Mark Hodnick, Dave Eisen, that were really committed to to getting this done, and we had a good design team. We used one design team to do all the parks so they got consistency and economy of scale. And then we, uh, we got good contractors. So the stars aligned for us to get this done. City Council was determined to make parks a premium. Given the high percentage that we have of youth in this city, we saw parks as an outlet for those children to make sure that they have the opportunities for, to enjoy and fulfill their lives, enrich their lives here in the community that they are born in and raised in. Heading the project, facilities manager Mark Hodnick with decades of experience in the field. <laughs> oh my God, you want me to do what? <laughs> Armed with vision, commitment, state grants, and development fees, Hodnick and Human Services Manager Dave Eisen went to work. Step one, advertise nationally for a landscape architect. 25 replied, seven were interviewed, one was chosen. MIG, an international firm based in Berkeley, California. They bought into our vision right from the very first day. There was never a problem anywhere, not in any aspect of it. We agreed with them on design principles, uh, all of their um, concepts that they came up with. It was a perfect marriage. Well, we thought it was a pretty tight schedule, but um, we also saw that the city was pretty organized and the uh, project manager was um, very experienced. That's what he does is he builds things. Sometimes you go to cities and they haven't built anything for quite a while, but that wasn't the case here. The contract was awarded in January of 2006. In February, they started work community meetings were the first steps. People came out on a Saturday morning. Uh, we'd set up um, easels um, to record their comments. And then we had um, photographs of various kinds of amenities that we could put in the park. People wanted places for their kids to play. They wanted swings. They wanted shade because this is Indio and it's really hot here. They wanted the parks to be safe. MIG put four teams of architects to work designing four parks at once. The city kept the ground turning and the paperwork moving. I can't say I was bored. Never a dull moment here in this position or in this city, actually. We're growing for the community. What was the most difficult part? Uh, keeping the project separate because we had so many going all at once. The city wanted uniform excellence in their parks, but not uniform design. MIG had the critical mass and the creativity to provide variety. Miles Avenue Park was the first to be unveiled, July 2007, adding a playground, picnic areas, trees, and a water feature. Dr. Carrion Park was next a total renovation. In that park, we added a basketball court, we've added gardens, we added a picnic shelter, two tot lots, uh, and some very distinctive public art, which chronicles the life of Dr. Carrillo. Indian Terrace is now Cahuilla Park and features a Native American motif. One of the designers himself is from Southern California, is very familiar with um, the area. He developed uh, thematic gardens that in included plants that the tribes had used for various things like medicine or food or building. Dominguez Park is known for its alley, a walkway between two lines of trees. The architects added basketball courts. There isn't a time that I go by there that, that there isn't a game going on. And Yucca Park is a small little neighborhood park and it's really the anchor of a neighborhood, of that neighborhood. We built a uh, pergola that connects the two sides of the park to the neighborhood. So you can walk through the park and in that pergola is picnics, you have the water play. Then we added uh, a very unique tot lot with a uh, playhouse in it. And out on the street, we put in a drinking fountain where dogs can get a drink because we saw a lot of people walking their dogs. 
The new park system has created a sense of community in Indio. In the neighborhood, people are watching the parks, and as they fill up with people, they become safer because people know each other better and, and they watch each other's kids. And if I see kids messing, I always tell them, hey, don't, don't disturb the park, it's nice. They paid a lot of money to get this done. Beezer Homes built Patton Park as part of its development north of the 10 freeway, and Doug York Plaza serves as a bit of shade and color at the edge of downtown. But was the $6.5 million transformation worth it? I, I grew up here. Uh, I've been a resident of the area since 1965, and uh, for me personally, it's uh, a return of Indio to what I remember it being 40-some years ago, 35 years ago. It was a uh, the exciting place to be in the valley. The kids now have some place they can really go and play and the parents enjoy being there with them. So it's a huge change for us. You see these areas being used more often than before and uh, it's it's something that we're trying to give back to the community. Oh it's great, it's great. The, the new design of the North Jackson Park is fabulous. I mean it's, they couldn't have done it any other way. It's, it's gonna be nice, real nice. Before it was no, no, no one would come out here and have picnics or parties family parties, which that I've seen a lot more since they improved the park. People can't help but sit up and take notice of Indio. But this is not the end of the story. We promised to renovate every existing park and we are meeting that um, obligation and we said we would add park land and we have done that and we will continue to do it as funds are available. North Jackson Park is now underway and in the next few years MIG will transform these 54 acres into a sports park. We know it'll have baseball fields, football fields, it'll have a full aquatic center with an Olympic sized pool and as well as a water park, water play park, but it'll also have the elements of a neighborhood park. There'll be a, there'll be a portion of that park set aside for, the, for picnic areas and for a place to go, as I always like to say, go fly your kite. But does Indio have enough money to realize all this? Two years ago, the voters of California passed a lot of money for park bonds, and um, we're going hard after that park bond money. There's always a way.